even if you're not like a top top golfer, if you're on the tour, mm. you yeah. can make some big money. Yeah, There's some of their houses are yeah. like, and you also, I think they get a nice life. Yeah, you do. To be honest, it's like good. they get left alone. You don't hear anything about golfers. You Best don't. believe they're probably doing stuff like going yeah. out and stuff like a normal person. But they're not like does, lime, but you like don't like hear anything. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I think to be honest, I think the PJ covered that up pretty well. To be honest, there's, there's this funny thing. One of the other golf podcasts that I listen to um, that just gives me all the info and everything. They always do this stat each podcast. It's like the most well, who's the most well-known golfer that would, would walk down the street and you wouldn't recognise. Because there's some guys that are big golfers. Like we, I even thought that about Rory. If Rory were out in the street, would you would would people stop him? I think Rory would. Yeah, I think we'll, Rory. But if you but said you, the fact you got this guy, that like just Rom, won, this, yeah. like Rom. this guy that just won the him, Open, him. this guy that just won the Open now, Harmon, you wouldn't recognise. I won't recognise him at you all. Know. He looks like Ricky Ponting. And I saw him. I was like, <laughs> he actually does. <laughs> I saw him. I was like, that looks like Ricky Ponting. <laughs> but hold on, Leanne, obviously. To be honest, first of all, you actually inspired me when I see you working on television. Because I think you speak so good, you're very eloquent, very knowledgeable, you're not scared to butt in, unless it's against me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to no, say no, that. She, she shut me down before, and like, she oh, was really? actually right, I got my stat wrong. She I said, no, 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 no. I would never put you on blast like that, but you had that. Remember when you said yeah, about Kevin yeah, De Bruyne yeah. being the best midfielder in the world, and he actually is. So, so we well done. Okay, we come. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I won that one then in the end. No, but I think you. I mean, you've had a great career. You played for the, some of the biggest clubs in the game. You played internationally. You played abroad. I think for what you've done, it kind of. I mean, you played at a high in terms of height in the women's game. You played at the biggest clubs. I didn't reach that level in men's football, but I think we got a similar path. As in, we went abroad. We done things that wasn't probably. People were doing so regularly then. And I say, you know, I admire you and I'm, I'm so glad you're here because I love your story. Oh, Honestly, thanks, I yeah, do. I appreciate that. We've gone back a long way. I know, you told me. Uh, yeah, From go on. Tufnell Park <laughs> days. Like, I remember when I was in the under nines at Arsenal and there was this, your old coach, he was telling my mum about um, how this, this boy is going to be the next big thing. He's going to be the next Ian Wright. And then like, <laughs> but my mum and dad, even still till this day, have followed your career. Then when they see us on Sky, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Because, you know, I was nine. When I come across you and you were playing at Tufnell Park before us, I think, we played on that pitch that was like, yeah. you know, like, people moan about pitches now, but <laughs> that pitch was bad. like, was there was Awful. nothing. Yeah. Like, it was like just grass, but we didn't and care. And even then, you never know, nets in the goal them times. Nah. Yeah, just, just nah. pulse. Yeah, just, and it's like, you know, when you score a goal, it's like, did that go did in? Did it go in or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this was playing for Arsenal, like, younger yeah. age groups. But, like, we go back a long way and, like, I just saw you had Harvey on before and same thing, you know, we all stick together yeah, somewhat. You always end up finding the right people and... These types of things are important. So thanks for saying that. I appreciate it. No, no, really, really. But do you know what I, was, I want to ask you now? Do you know, like, obviously, seeing me, for example, when you was nine years old, and I'm sure you see other players as well, did that inspire you even more to become a football player? Because at the time, the women's game wasn't really big at all. But then you've kind of... I mean, for me, you're probably the biggest player, definitely, that I know anyway. But I think you've had a great career again. But what inspired you to say, you know what, I want to be football and... I want to do football. Honestly, say, like, my dad used to play for Palace. Like, he was in the reserves, played for South End. Like, Bobby Moore was his manager at South End. And I'm like, Dad, why don't you tell more people? Like, and then my mum loves football even more than me and my dad put together. I think that's if that's even possible. So, you know, she, I said my mum could be a scout, like, from back in the day. She watches everything. Remember, there used to be that, like, um, Victory Shield under 15. Victory Shield, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She'd watch Scotland, Wales, yeah. everything from back in the day. So, I always felt like football was in my blood, but from the age of five, I always said I want to. I'm going to be a professional footballer. Nothing's going to stop me. From the age of five years old, so people good. used to look at me and say, "Like, she all right? You know, girls don't play football." That's one. young, right? There I isn't even a professional league, yeah. right? There wasn't. Yeah. Girls didn't play no. football. No. I looked up to Eric Cantona. You know, as I got older, like David Beckham, there wasn't uh, Serena Williams and Venus, but there weren't any football people I could look up to. Like Yanks, like Rachel Yankee was the first kind Rachel of Rachel Yankee was the first one that came to my radar because she was at Arsenal. Yeah. And she was quick, she yep. was fast, she was mixed raced again. Yeah. Like she was the, the first one to come on my radar and that's me when I was a, a young Arsenal player as well. Yeah, like she was the original, but you couldn't really see them unless you were there. I was lucky I got to see the players at training, but the games are on TV now. Whereas back in the day, you couldn't be like, I want to aspire to be that person. But when I look back on it, and I used to feel like I was a bit of an alien when I tell this story because it wasn't until I moved to America that I feel like people understood my dreams and my goals because people used to sometimes try and like shoot them down as if to say, what are you talking about? Like, whereas luckily my mum and dad always believed in what I wanted to do. 
And I'll cut a long story short, but at the age of five, my dad's teammate had an under sevens team in Catford, Elms, they were called. And I said, Dad, I want to play for Ray's team. I, I'll be honest, my dad didn't want me to play football. He wanted to be a golfer or a tennis player. He did. He didn't used to say, and he hates this because you've met my dad, Jay. He's the most supportive dad in the world, right? Never missed a game since he saw me do a quiff turn and a double drag back. <laughs> um, but, you know, he hates it. Silks. So people can't believe that my dad was like that. But he wasn't like, you're not playing. But he never really supported it. And then I had to go up to his friend. He was this big guy on his team, yeah. He played centre-back, like. And I said, Ray, I want to play for your team. I was like six. And then he said, all right, well, we've got training on Saturdays, 50p. We've got games on Sunday, £2.50. So I told my mum. Then my mum took me. I went training. But can you imagine as a six-year-old? I know, it's Going crazy. up to some big, like, beefy guy. Yeah. Mm. Saying, but that shows heart, though. And that shows you that, yeah. you know, I knew it was yeah. in me to do that. So I went training with them. And then my dad never came because he had a game at the same time. One day his game got called off. And his mates kept going to him, Jeff, you've got to go and see her play. She's brilliant. And he'd be like, all right, I'm going to go. Never missed a game since. He said he was watching it from his perspective. He's watching me play and he's going, no, nah, no, nah, she couldn't have meant to do that. Like, <laughs> touch and everything. Like, because in my first game, I scored like six goals for the boys team. You were that good. Like, that, 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 that good and yeah. I was, I was. And I'm not saying I'm Ronaldo or Messi, but I was always the best player. Like, I was like a zoo animal. Like, people used to come to my school just to, like, see me. And that was unheard of. It was like I was this weird... Think about it. It's like, you know when you go to a, that, a pet that movie called shop? Again? Bend it like Beckham. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know when you go to a pet shop and you start looking at animals and everyone's looking at you? Like, people would come to my school and be like, oh, there's that girl. She's so good. She plays for Arsenal. Like, people used to come to get a glimpse of me if I was a real person because girls never played. At that time, you just said, actually, there wasn't any girls in that, in that space in football. What was it like, obviously, trying to aspire to break through in that period of time when there wasn't anybody to look up to. It's tough. It yeah, must, must it, have been tough. it was. And I was always lucky because I was at Arsenal and we had the best. You know, Arsenal were always ahead of the, the game best. when it yeah, comes yeah, to the yeah. women's as well. The Cakers like, was quality. Vic yeah, yeah. was the guy, he found me when I was yeah. six, like That's in crazy, South East yeah. London, you know? And actually they scouted me for the boys team, funnily enough, because I was on an all boys team. And then they come up to, you know, they go up to your mum and dad. They used to anyway at the games and say, oh, like, can we get your information? Yeah, give you a card. Or yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Because it was before Instagram yeah. and emails. And uh, it's funny because Vic always tells this story how I got closer and they were like, oh, actually, she's a girl because I had this like little like pl plait down the back of my head. It's a compliment because they scouted me for the Arsenal boys. Yeah. And then it just it just was something that I felt like I had to do and I needed to do. But there wasn't anyone to look up to, to answer your question. Like, there just wasn't any visibility. Soccer was probably bigger in America than it was in, in England back then as well, right? It was, always. So I remember when we used to do football, I remember when we used to do football at school, it was like when we was doing football, the girls had to sit to one side or something or do something, skipping or something. They wasn't even involved in football at all. No. It was like, just move to one side kind of thing. And that wasn't even that long ago, think no, about it. Wasn't. it, right? it, it it's, it's hard to imagine that being the case, I'll put the girl in goal. Yeah. You know, I was always good. So, you know, but I remember, you remember the JVC Centre at Highbury, right? This was a place, you've probably heard of it, where everybody went to play. And I'll never forget it. I walked in there and I was like, oh my God. And my dad will tell you the same thing. We looked around and there was about 100 girls that were all at the same level as me. Or like, I was still better, but they could, they had a touch. They were, you know, and we were just like, oh my God. Like and my dad's like reaction. Same, similar yeah, level that you Yeah, but now. I never knew that existed yeah. because there was never any girls playing. So then it almost was amazing because we were all around each other playing like, you know, five aside and all that. And then it helped me feel like what I was doing was like, was normal. But I also didn't really care what people thought. I used to, it's hard, you know, you're saying about the girls used to have to like do skipping. It's true. Or do the apparatus, you know, in school. Yeah, that's what it is. When I was walking down the street, like it's hard to fathom that people used to stop in their cars when I was in my Man United kit and uh, make comments to a little kid. What are you doing playing football? You're a girl. That's crazy. Like my mum will tell you, I was walking I around Sydenham and, and, and I'm like, oh my God, mum, why are they doing this? Like, I didn't think I was weird because I was a girl in a football kit, but imagine grown men in their like vans, like yeah. shouting out the window to a kid. Fucking awful, isn't it? Like, it's what? crazy. Yeah, what you, I mean, that. It makes me sad. And you know, like we've spoken, you know, at Sky Sports and everything, and you know, you've told me about the hardships you go through even now. And like honestly, when you told me that, I went home and I started following you. I I was looking at Twitter just to see if anyone said anything. Cause I was thinking, I'm gonna go and speak to these people. Like, what are you doing? Why are you speaking to this person like this? For you don't know them. You don't know what they've been through. It still and happens now. Yeah. It, it, it's crazy. It's but, crazy. You that know, that's why I was reluctant when you said about doing a golf shot. And it sounds weird, yeah, but if that gets clipped and I don't do a good shot, it's like in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I'm gonna get this abuse. And I can take banter. You know, and I'm going to do the golf shot because I don't care. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, it's horrible to just... If you don't like me as a pundit, that's absolutely fine. But there's all this, like... I always say I tick all the wrong boxes, but the right boxes in my eyes. You know, I'm black. 
I'm gay, I'm a woman, you know, all those things that people can't handle. And I think to myself, why do you have to be so nasty? Like, if you want to turn off the TV when I'm on or the radio, go ahead and do it. But why do you need to let me know that? Do you know what I mean? Like, why? I don't like everyone on the telly. I don't like every actor, yeah. actress, whatever, but yeah. I'm not going to go and tell them yeah. you're not doing that properly. Like, and I think people think they know you when you're doing stuff on TV. And also, yeah. you've got to think about it. You're doing a job that these guys would dream of. Yeah. Dream of and yeah. I think to yeah. myself, you try doing what do I do. You know what the funny thing is, though? You know what the funny thing is? When I look at it, and even yesterday, I, put, I, I, I said something about um, Man United. You see that? No, I didn't. But you're lucky because <laughs> I wouldn't come on if it was a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and, no, it was. I mean, the guy asked me a funny question. He said, "Like, do you think Man United uh, are going to put in a challenge this year?" And I just said, "Like, for what, basically?" Yeah. You know. And afterwards, all these people start coming on my Twitter, and for me, it don't really bother me because I've got thick skin anyway. Like, I don't care if you abuse me or nothing like that. But like, they was like, "What have you done in your career?" How can you say these things? And I'm saying to my, my mind, I'm thinking, well, I've got closer to that than you have. So my opinion, I've lived something, I've experienced it, I've been in that fishbowl, you know. And then you got these pe these people that are like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a fucking idiot. You're this. You're that. And blah blah blah. But then when me and you spoke, it was that one step further that people was coming at you for the way you look, for the way you sounded, and all that kind of stuff. And in my mind, I'm thinking, these people like so ignorant. They're so ignorant and stupid. And it, it bothered me when I went home that day, Leanne. It really did. Like, it resonated with me and it hurt me, man. And it was just like, I can't believe there's still people out there, I mean, that are just going to not listen to what you've got to say because everything you had to say when we was on TV that day was 100% right. And the thing is, though, not everyone has to agree with me, but my opinion surely doesn't warrant death threats. No. That's Do you I'm, know what I mean? That's like, extreme. And that's what I've had. Seriously. Like, extreme. like in the process of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and it was about when I was about to get on the plane, when I had to go to the Men's World Cup, and it was... Uh, Did it affect uh, you? Yeah, it does, yeah, because course. I uh, don't mind. If someone calls me, you know, an effing idiot or whatever, like, I, listen, that's fine. But it's the way that they, they come at me. They can never come at me for anything I've got that's wrong, necessarily stats or anything like that. But they, the guy said that I, I, he's going to cut my head off. Um, and then the oh, police God. found him before I'd actually even reported it. Because really? that whole reporting thing, like, got to a point where it's pointless. But then myself and Anton Ferdinand have gone to the House of Commons. There's new laws in place now that have allowed, you know, people can't do that, they get arrested. So it has calmed down a little bit. But the whole death threat stuff, it's like, just because I said something about Mitrovic that you didn't like, do you honestly think that deserves a death, death threat? threat? I know. And, and it made me scared though. It must be scary. Took the time out of their day to go on somewhere, comment that, and think that's alright. Exactly, it's but mad. it's scary as well it's because mad. let's be honest. Like when you land, you don't know. You don't know who's coming at you. You don't know who that person is. That could be anyone walking down the street. That but even when I get really the train scary. and stuff, like sometimes I'm a bit like, Skeptical. you know what it's like because I can go into a pub and. I mean, football's our religion in England, isn't it? And I just so happen to be on TalkSport and Sky, which is like the most, on my in my house, my religion, missus yeah. is like, babe, I love you, but you've had it on for eight hours, like Sky Sports News. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? From a kid, you have it on. It's like, I it's come in, in the it's background, habit. yeah. It's habit. Like, yeah. even if you're not watching it, it's, it's what it's you do. Back, yeah. And like, I feel like, People always, some, sometimes people, you'll find this one funny to make it a bit more lighthearted. Some people would start randomly shouting at me. I was on the boat on Henley on Thames, just like electric boat. And this man starts going, Lisa, Lisa. And I'm like, nah, mate, I'm not Lisa, but I can be if you want me to be. He's like, <laughs> but I know, like, you're my mate's um, sisters. And I'm going, nah, mate, I'm not. But I know that he's probably seen me somewhere. Uh, yeah. And then he, that's what happens. And I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, it's me off the telly. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I make yeah, you like yeah, a right yeah. idiot. But it happens quite a lot where people are like hearted. But then sometimes, once people know what you're on and they've seen you, they think they then come and talk to you. You probably get it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they come and pull up a chair. I was in Portugal and this man come and pulled up a chair and thought we could have breakfast together. <laughs> I spent two hours with him the night before talking about Newcastle's takeover. <laughs> two hours on holiday. <laughs> and then I'm like, mate, and I'm quite, I'm like, mate, we're two hours about, not you know, enough. I love though, because you're, you're, you're very humble and, you know, you'll talk to anyone. Which, as long as they're respectful to you, you'll speak to anyone. And I love that you give people that time. When you come in Sky Sports, every time I've been around you, actually, you're there, you're bubbly, you're, you know, you've got a kind heart, you're always smiling, which I think is great. But one question I have for you, do you know, like, obviously, you're gay. Am I? Why when... <laughs> <laughs> are you out of me like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm only joking. When, 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 you, when, did, when did you know? So it's funny because my story is different. Like, and I think with, with people that are gay or identify LGBTQ+, they put you in a box, right? I had a boyfriend growing up, loved my boyfriend. Wasn't until I was at 21 years old that I just thought, okay, like, you know, 
this is why not <laughs> you know and then I kind of I feel like as I've got older I've kind of kind of found myself different people have different stories where they knew from the age of four years old some people know but I didn't and I'm okay with saying that because sometimes I think people will try and work me out. They're like, you've got short hair, but you'd like to get your nails done. <laughs> this is honestly an everyday thing I have to go through. <laughs> oh, but you're wearing makeup, but you're gay. But you also like to wear men's, perf men's aftershave sometimes, but you dress in sometimes men's clothes, but then you also like heels. Do you know what I mean? Like people are trying to work that I out. I have your aftershave today. Yeah. That's a men's one. Victor and Ralph, <laughs> yeah. But like, I'm just me. And I've always been lucky that I grew up with a family, my mum and dad, that always allowed me to be myself. And even before it was a topic of conversation, you know, I was the first ever England footballer to come out that I was gay. I was probably, I think I was the first in the world, to be honest, but because it wasn't a thing then, this was like 10 years ago, it wasn't really a big story. Yeah. You know, I spoke about it. It wasn't like it is now. You know, when the guys come out like Josh Cavello and Jake Daniels and they are men, so it is a little bit different. But I always felt like, you know, this is me and who I am and I'm lucky that I can deal with that. I mean. It's but you've, always, you, you've got thick skin though. I know that certain things bother you, but you to me, you look like a, a strong woman um, that you're not going to show like out to the open. You're not going to show something bothers you. It might inside, but you're not going to let that out. For me, I look at you and I think you have got thick skin. I have, but we're all human, right? So like, I'm very lucky that I have my close friends from when I was like 12 years old, right? My best friends that... Don't eat, they're like, I love what you sound, Sky. I don't know what you're saying, but you look great. <laughs> like, my friends from school, they don't even like football, right? Yeah. And then I've got my real day ones that are always there for me. But then there's times where, on any given day, it can affect you more than others. There's sometimes, like, I could wake up like, what was it? Today, someone tweeted me saying um, this picture, and it was like, you're fat, you know, you need to get in the gym, whatever it is. Now, you can't unsee that, can you? Right? Like you just can't. So then you think, okay, they've said that. So I feel like I've built this resilience to let it go. But then sometimes you could be tired. Yeah. It could be that time of the month. And it gets to you. <laughs> like, it gets to you. There's it gets loads of different you. factors that you think I've had enough. And I don't go back at people, but what I've realized is that particularly Twitter, people want a reaction yeah. like from you. And then they'll start being, and they follow me. Oh my God. Like, yeah, I'm like, but you follow it. me and you're telling me you're turning off your radio. Like, Talk to me and tell me how this makes sense. How do, you, how do you deal with that stuff then? I try to vocalise it. Like I speak to my girlfriend. I speak to my mum and dad. But my mum come off social media. Like she's got Instagram, but she was like, I can't watch this anymore. Because I'm parents, a little girl. Your parents get some abuse and stuff like that as um, well? Not really. They'll get weird people messaging them. Like, like to my mum, like saying like weird stuff. But like other than that. Um, not nasty stuff, just like odd stuff. Because I do stuff that's in other countries and, you know, they see it. But I think it's more to do with that my mum sees things that people say about me and it hurts her. And she wants to go back at them. I'm a little girl, I'm 35, but no matter what, you're still your mum or your dad's little girl. Like, like, yeah, as much as I don't yeah. want to be a little girl, you are. I don't mind being a little boy to my mum. <laughs> <laughs> she still rubs my bath sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> but it, it, it isn't easy. And you know when you're saying about I'm quite like, I don't really... I don't let things affect me. Like, they do. Like, I've always vocalised, like, the good, the bad and the ugly on my socials. I think social media, sometimes people can just put how great everything is. But there comes a time, like, a couple of weeks ago, I was shattered. You know, I was flying to America. It might look great, but you're shattered and you're running on empty. And when you're running on empty, it doesn't matter if you're flying business class or economy. Do you know what I mean? It's nice that you get to do these amazing things, but you still are a human. And I sometimes think I'm superhuman. Because I'll, I'll land from America and just go straight and do a show. Yeah, I can't do them at all. And I'm like, I I've learned to kind of, I'm quite good at realising what I need, but I've learned to kind of pull back a little bit because I'm like, Leanne, you're so tired, you're going to cry. And that, that's not a nice feeling. So things do affect me, but I just vocalise them to the right people. Yeah. And obviously, speak a little bit about that. You know, as a female, when you are gay and you are playing on a women's team, how does it work as in rooming and all that kind of stuff? Because I've, I've, I've never really heard this about, you know, manager. would they put you with your girlfriend or if you're on the same team? But how does that go? Uh, different managers have different um, ways of dealing with it, I guess. And I guess it's not something that happens in the men's game, right? Yeah, but at the same time, because the men get their own rooms. They've always had their own rooms yeah. from back room in the day. Own, unless, <laughs> I mean, if you're a young youth team player, you might get put with another young youth team player if you're coming into their first team. But yeah. apart from that, you've got your own rooms. And I think that I've had, I've only had like three girlfriends and two of them have been former teammates. And from my recollection, they don't put you together. But then you end up like, some 
couples that have been on teams. They are together all the time. But I think you're so aware of, I was always aware of not doing that. They almost did the opposite. Yeah, right. And never spoke to my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you, you don't want to be... To her. No, but you know what I mean? Honestly. Like, you're on a team. So you never, yeah. you have to switch off. Yeah, yeah. So there's no that none of that affection. Like, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like you have to kind of separate the two. But to be honest, like me now, I'm with someone like we've been together nearly three years, hasn't got any interest in football. Her dad's a massive Tottenham fan. Forgive Ooh. for that. Ooh. But um <laughs> she, it's great breaker. because she she like literally loves me for me. Yeah. And that makes a difference. Because I used to think, oh, it's brilliant working with someone that you're with. But actually it becomes toxic. One of you might be playing, the other one might not be. Yeah. One of you might have a problem with the coach, the other might might not. not. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think of that actually. And yeah. also, there's situations where people will sign players based upon knowing their girlfriend might come. It's like an unwritten, no, really? unspoken yeah. thing. Wow. Yeah, it's an unspoken thing, but it's not like a secret, but it's a reality. So then you'll see a lot of couples on a team because the one, one's this is the reality. One's usually always better than the other. Yeah. Usually quite. Of course, it's, yeah, used to happen yeah. where like significantly, yeah. and coaches are clever. It happened to me before. My contract had got re-signed in America. They said they were, my ex-girlfriend at the time was like on way less money than me. They protected her, but not me, but knowing I'd renegotiate for a lower salary. They didn't tell me that, but I'm not stupid. It's, wow. someone... it's interesting you, you, you mentioned the room thing as well, like Sharon and the men's team get individual rooms. The money thing is something we always speak yeah. about in golf. Like when I look at LET compared to DP World Tour, and even in the States as well, it's the same. There's a huge like money yeah. gap, isn't there, between men's and female sport? I mean, yeah, exactly. How do you, uh, what do you think about it? I need to know your views on this really, because obviously I, I think there should be, it's, there should be more equality within Balance, the games. Yeah. I, especially now when I look at the game, like Wembley Stadium now is sold out all the time for the women's game. And I think it's, I think it's so good that it's the good, women's yeah. football is growing, um, getting better. You know, the players, very good players technically as well. Um, but again, the, the financial benefits are just not there. Like I don't, I, I'm not sure. Can a, can a woman retire from the women's game and say, I don't want to do anything no more? Do you know what's funny, Jay? Like, since I retired, I didn't actually officially retire. I just kind of left Juventus and then got asked to do a Women's World Cup in Qatar for being, and then that was it. I kind of, people liked me and I carried on. But in a nutshell, like, I'm finally in a position where I can actually save money I'm in the process of buying a house. You know, all these things, and that's not from playing. Yeah. So that's from yeah. me doing my punditry Media. and my work that I'm doing. Yeah. And it wasn't until, I remember the girls used to say, like, someone that didn't get picked for the World Cup or the Euros, they'd do, like, you know, BBC or whatever it was. And there was this rumour going around that, like, you get paid more money from doing the punditry than you do from playing. So we'd be playing in the Euros in 2009, and the people that were doing the analysis were getting more. It wouldn't make us mad. I just thought, is that really true? It's weird, though. It's right. Actually, yeah. it is true. It's crazy. It is true. And, like, I think now, thankfully... Times are changing, but you know, they just did, Karen Carney just did this recent report with the like government and they're trying to fix everything. Cause the league below, you know, like the championship, yeah. our equivalent, yeah. they don't really get paid. And there's teams in there like Crystal Palace, Cholton, like they all those teams. Paid. Not really. They might get a little bit, <laughs> but enough to cover no. maybe your petrol yeah. or like, you know, there's like so Lewis. Got jobs. So you're you're, yeah. Really, listen, yeah. you're really playing that game at that level, you're really playing it for the love of the game. You're not so playing you've got it. Other jobs. There's no financial gain there. Yeah, we used to have, have other to. jobs. Like yeah. when we won the Champions League, like we were training twice a week with Arsenal and we won the Champions League. But that was more of a like I think that was a freak situation because we all loved each other. We had a great team. We had the best players. So we just used to literally want to be around each other all the time. And we had that team camaraderie. Yeah. But when I look back on it, like Kira Grant, one of our um, centre backs at the time, she was literally working as a liaison officer, sorting out the team from Sweden to get to the game. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> you're thinking like, and she's about to play in the Champions League so final. Hard. And Mental. she's doing that. So when I see sometimes the girls complaining now, I'm thinking, Yes, the equal pay thing, absolutely. But then sometimes I think, oh my God, you've got it so good. Like I see some of the lionesses, like when they got, and they absolutely deserve it. And I'm like, even just your kit being lined up. Like I had the best of both worlds because I was able to be fully You came through eras, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Is but it different now then, right now? Than what it was? Than when you played. Like, yes, in your I mean, prime. it's been different in the last year. Yeah, <laughs> Since true. the Lionesses won the Euros, it's just... It's massive, really. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, people don't realise it's not been... I only retired three, four years ago. So, you know, it wasn't like I was playing in dinosaur times. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I was... Um, it's still we, relative... I mean, it's just there, four years ago. Nothing. It is. Yeah. And you know what, right? One of my old um, colleagues actually made a good... She tweeted the other day about 
um, how the quality's always been there. Because this, this situation of, like, it's not because I played, but, like, this situation of it's got better, the quality, it hasn't. There's more visibility. It's true. And okay. people oh, yeah. laugh when I say this, but I love Beyonce. I don't just go stand at the O2 hoping she's going to turn up. Yeah. You, you know, know, you know she's coming, so you go. <laughs> Whereas with the women's game, you never used to see it advertised anywhere, anywhere. did you? Anywhere, nothing. So nothing. how are you supposed to know about yeah. it? In so fact, yeah, it has noticed to be changed because you even see promos and stuff come on Sky, don't you? Yeah. But the, the game, the, the women's more game now is massive. Yeah, more. Like, like I said, listen, Wembley Stadium is getting sold out. like In 10 minutes in 10 as minutes, well. Like, that don't happen. That Before, it was like, that, there's no way that's going to happen before. Yeah, the men went through a stage where they couldn't even do that, remember? Exactly, yeah. And, that, and that's the thing. That's why I've, I've, I respect female footballers so much, because I like the way... And you guys are really pushing the sport. Yes, there's people like me that will push it as well. Righty does a lot for the game as well that push it. But I, I still, you know, I, I know there's people out there that are like, you know, get this women's game off TV. We're like, what's going on here? They're, you know, they shouldn't... They shouldn't be playing like on the same size pitches and you know all this kind There's of stuff. There's people I work with that are like that, and I know they're like that. <laughs> I just know they are. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But th it's up to them to get on board, and it's interesting because when the girls won, I had so many phone calls. Oh, do you know what, Leanne? I'm, I'm thinking. I was been thinking about it for a while getting into the women's game. No, you wasn't. You've now True. seen there's more Seen's opportunity exactly. out there. Yeah, whereas people now like right to jump on board. Yep. Righty was there from day before it was a popular thing. And that's exactly why I love Righty, because he, he just does things, you know, because he loves it. And we need people like that that can elevate the game. But I think as well, though, like to answer your question about the pay before, you know, you asked me about the equality and that. They deserve to get the same. Not, I'm going to say 350 grand a week because it's a business. But when it comes to bonuses, why can't the players get the same as the men? They're playing in the World Cup. You're sacrificing a hell of a lot. Um, but I think it's really good now that the players feel like they can have a voice. Because I felt like when I played, my voice was shut down. Yeah, Me and any, any time you had you any scared voice. To say anything? Well, I, no, but it cost me my career, Jay. Like, that's what I'm England. saying, yeah. I wasn't no, that's, scared. That's what but... for, me, for me, I was one of those people, I did say stuff sometimes and it did like, it did bite me. But obviously I was in the men's game. So as long as my f I could perform, I could get back. But in the women's game, it would be more cutthroat. Yeah. You'd yeah. be looked at as a problem. I think that as well about the men's game. I'm like, there's certainly managers that don't get along with certain players, right? But because they're performing, they'll put them in. I've always felt like with when I played, it was almost like, nah, just be quiet. Like, even if it was something, like all the issues I've raised from about 10, 12 years ago, my best mate said to me the other day, you were bringing those issues to back the forefront there. back Long then, ago, but yeah. no one really wanted to listen, really. And now yeah. it's right. like, Different so world, that at the same it? time is a little bit frustrating. I'm not going to lie, because I feel like when I try to bring things to people's attention, it was like, just be quiet, you're a troublemaker. When actually I was trying to do it for the greater good and now everybody's sticking together, doing things where they're putting out statements together. And I wish that people would have done that when, when I had problems. Yeah, because anyway, I mean, it could've, there could have been big changes back then. But you know what, no one likes, the, when, you know when you're the first person to come out and say something, that person's hated normally. Yep. But then later on, when like 10, 20, 30 people are gone, oh, you know, she's such a good girl, she's so, you know, she's so switched on, she wants to make change, she's trying to help people. But initially, if you're that first person to stand up and say, like even me, when I, I told you I got epilepsy, I didn't really hear many sports people stand up and say, I got epilepsy, and I know why. It's because if you start saying that, mm. all of a sudden you could become a liability in the club's eyes. Because if I'm having seizures all the time, but I've got a four year contract, I'm still gonna get paid for four years. Yeah. You know, so for me, I didn't really say nothing, and I'll be the first person to know, if you've got epilepsy, speak up. You know, don't be scared to say what you've got and you can deal with your condition. But I wasn't one of those when I was younger, because I was thinking, you know what, if I say something, I might not get a long-term deal here. Mm -hmm. I think everybody felt quiet. that way, though, Jay. I think everybody, like, you know, there's people that I know that had diabetes that didn't speak about it. But now it's like, on a positive note, in 2023, like can. people can speak yeah. up and it's not seen as a hindrance or a weakness. And I think for men especially, yeah. you know, men. mental health, those types of things, it's so important because I feel like it was seen as a weakness for a man to speak up if they're not feeling good. Whereas now, it's like, no, you can speak up and you can get help. It, even I, I mean, even I mean, now, obviously, there's female managers in the game, right? Back then, I mean, there probably wasn't. I mean, I know Vic Akers. Vic Akers is... I love Vic Akers. He's always... I, I don't, I've never heard anyone say a bad word about Vic Akers, top man. Um, but was there any, like, when you had these, you know, male managers, did you ever feel like a certain way or did they make you feel, you know, I don't know, I don't even know how I want to put this, to be honest. But did they ever f make you feel like you wasn't worthy? 
Um, no one ever told me you're not good enough, Liam, but they always used, you know what it's like, they always find a reason. But I always kind of not push back, but say to them, like they always used to say, let's be honest, yeah, my my jeans, I'm never, I'm always going to have a big butt and I'm always going to be bigger bones. Like, that's the reality, right? But I'm okay with that's that. That's why we love you. But I also had, like, there was times when they're telling me I'm fat, I'm overweight and stuff. When I look back on pictures, I'm like, raw, I look good. And I like myself still now, but like, I'm thinking, what do you mean I'm overweight? I've just run the most in the game. When you look at the stats here, I spoke to the nutritionist at one team I was on and they were like giving me my plan as every player had, yeah? Not because I was running on my own, like back in the day when a player come pre-season and they're over, overweight and they go running on their own. It wasn't that type of party. And I remember the night before one game, this coach benched me and he said I wasn't, I didn't look fit enough, yeah? I said, we played a game three days ago and I've got my stats from that game. Have you seen the stats from that game? Started stuttering and muttering. I said, just let me show you these. Because I went to the meeting with all my stuff. I'm not a busybody, but if you're going to try and come at me with yeah, something that's but... not true, I'll make sure I have it. So then he didn't know what to do. I was still bench, but he didn't know what to say. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, I've just covered nearly 10K in a game. And did he the most it? in any team and the most touches in the game, all that type of stuff. You know, the GPS yeah, yeah. And, and they, they didn't know what to say. say. So, so if that's seen as a troublemaker, maker, then I'll, 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 I'll happily be a troublemaker because, because that's, that's not troublemaking. That's me you telling me I'm fat. Yeah. In other words, I'm not fit enough. It's an, it's don't an excuse, don't be though, disrespectful. Do you ever get anything back from them about why you got? If, if he said that and you've gone back to him with a no, stats, they didn't know what to say. Back. They were sitting there with like because they Sparring, thought that yeah, I'd just yeah. be kind of like, okay. But the thing is, right? I but think as managers well, don't like that. Even in the men's game, yeah. Now, do you know when you confront a manager, they don't like that because they look at. I, I had it in my career. Managers will look at themselves, especially in the generation that we come up in. They're almost like the sergeant major, the head teacher. Like, if I say something, don't answer back. And then there's people like me and Leanne that we had a voice. We wanted to make our voice heard. If and we people come to you with a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. That to me is like captain and leadership material. If your teammates come, come, come to, to you me, with yeah. a problem and you can feed back to the coach, then, then that, that should be, be okay, no? Yeah, like, I mean, uh, listen, I was, I was a captain at Cardiff for a period of time. Um, Mark Hatton was a club captain, but he got injured. So, and he was out for a while. So then the manager gave me the captain's armband, which is, you know, amazing for me. But then, you know, like the little things like, you know, ask the manager for a day off or, yeah. you know, them kind of things. Sometimes you go to the manager and you ask for the day off, you're the person that's sitting there with him and it's almost like I'm asking it out. So he'll get up, he might get upset with me sometimes and I'll be like, listen, this is coming from the players, yeah. not just me, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I think in the, in the man's game, like you can, you can say things, but you can get away with it at the same time, Leanne. But Jay, you, you know perform. what I realised? As I got older, I got a bit smarter in my wording. So I'd ask the same question, but when I was at Juventus and they wasn't playing me, I couldn't understand because everybody was like... I think I know what you're going to say. And I said, instead of me saying, why am I not playing? I used to say, how do I get into your team? Boom. That's what I used to and say. And it was like... That's exactly complete, what I used to say. It was a so complete different... Throw them off, they still yeah. don't have an answer. You throw them off. You, you, they don't know what to say because you're like, how do I get in your team? Yeah. Like, you tell me what I need to do to get in your team but they never again had an answer, but it got them, they weren't on the back foot. Yeah. yeah. They were kind of like. When you say, why am I not playing? Yeah. You're questioning him. Yeah. You're basically saying, you're stupid, man. Why, why, yeah. why they am I receive not it like that? Like that. Yeah. But other coaches I've had, I've had good coaches that are, they want you to ask them. They want players that want to play. So you have to navigate like which coach is okay with that and which one's not. And I find in the men's game, they're kind of okay with it from what I've gathered because my, my friends like you and other people have played. Some managers are okay with someone asking. But in the women's game, it was almost like, no, no, you don't ask. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, why not? I want to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in it's interesting now. It, I think it's I still. I mean, again, the, the the women's game is growing and growing fast. Actually, I like it. In fact, I, I mean, I wish golf was like that because golf, even in the men's it? game, Leanne, yeah, golf in the men's game is like it's 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 growing, but very slowly. The women's. Again, the same. I mean, the money situation in the golf game is awful. Again, not awful, but I just think. In football, women don't have the opportunity to retire and, you know, live how they want to live. You have a long career, you've played like 10, 15, 20 years as a football career, as a female, you still can't, unless you really invest your money in your shrewd, you can't just say, you know what, I want to get up and play golf today yeah. if I don't want to. Whereas men, they're men that are some ridiculous money now. Um, like average players are on 100 grand a week in the Premier League and it's like, that kind of money, if you're, if you're investing that kind of money, you don't have to do nothing again. You don't. 
but the women don't have that opportunity and I think that's where I don't think it's never going to be the same and that's not for, you know that's not because I don't want it the same it's just never going to be the same change, but How? I think the gap can, should be narrowed where women can retire and if they don't want to do nothing they don't have to mm -hmm. I, I agree with you I, I think that it'd be great if we I was saying the other day and someone laughed I said if we get to a point where we're on 350 grand a week I might go for a run every day like, <laughs> but like you know we used to get I just think the bonuses need to be better when the girls are getting through, you know, to a final. Do you know final. what the bonuses are? Off the top of my head, um, I think they're getting, uh, well, I think they get 100 grand each, more or less, if they were to make the final. Is this that team? Type of stuff. Or a team at team. England. So, like, you know, and that don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty that sure. Parata. But the, the US Women's National Team, sky's the limit. You know, really? They've been getting mad bonuses for millions. Just the U there. US is different. Oh, it? like so it different. just the thing is that's why when I moved there twelve years ago. Is that why you moved there, by the way? Not only that, but it was fully pro. Like we trained every day, and like I loved it so much that I remember that first day of waking up a proper pro. Like we were pro at Arsenal, but we weren't. If like, you know, like, train, salary. Not train every day at Arsenal. No, no, because no, really. like, people were teachers. What, yeah. What do you do for the rest of the week then? I was in school because okay. I turned oh. pro when I was 14. Okay, wow. So like I was in school. I played in the FA Cup final when I was 16 and went to school the next day. Like, she lands a, she lands a baller, you know. It was weird. <laughs> it was a weird feeling. I was like, Mum, I don't want to go to school. You're going to school. Even, <laughs> even, even when we played in that charity game the other day, I was like, could she can pass it, man. She yeah, I've still got. You don't lose your touch, Technique, do you? You don't lose. Yeah. And the, the thing fitness, is, you lose. You do lose that quickly, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just don't think, the thing is though, I've been trying, we talk about this all the time, our fitness journeys, don't yeah. we? Because I'm like, I'll go every day to the gym, right, for three months. Then I'll just be like, do you know what? I can't, like, I'm always on this stop-start journey. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Like, I, I'll be honest with you, like, even me now, like, I like to keep myself fit, don't get me wrong. Yeah, no, but I've, either. yeah, I got- I said to him, he trimmed, he looks <laughs> I, look, I look trimmer now, yeah, because that, so after I retired in 2021, I said to myself, you know what? I just want to live like a normal person. Yeah. I don't want to think about what I'm eating. When you're on holiday, you can actually holiday. go on holiday. Exactly. Because you're, you're always on thinking, I, need, I was running hill sprints in like Portugal on like a road when I'm on holiday. I was like, down on holiday. First thing in the morning, I'd wake up, I'd go for a run, then I'd go to breakfast. Yeah. Even when I was on holiday, I'd have like a week, two weeks max rest. But then after that, I was back in the gym. I was running on holidays and everything. But for me, I, I just said to myself, you know what? I just want to... I don't want to be disciplined at all. I played 23 years. So for 23 years, pretty much I've been disciplined. Yeah. yeah. Now I just want to live. But then... But that doesn't mean like partying and stuff. I think people no, think no, you're no. like all of a sudden, oh, I'm partying and drinking. I mean just like it's just, eating... Yeah. If I want to have a, a mousse yeah. at nine o'clock at night, I'll have one. If yeah. I want to have cheesecake, I'll yeah. have it, you know? And you're not you're not going to burn... Like in some sessions, you burn like 3,000 calories. calories. That's a thing. You cannot replicate that you can't. on a treadmill or if I go running Nothing. or football. It, it just all the... Muscle, twitch, fibres, everything. It just, you're so fit from being a footballer. Do you like, know what the thing is? I, so when I retired my playing weight, I was like 91 kilos, 92 kilos. After a year of, and I wasn't, when I say, being, no, you I never look big, I yeah, wasn't come eating on, shit. Let's... No, but I'm six foot three, almost <laughs> six foot <laughs> But like, I, I, I don't eat shit, but I would have like pasta when I want. Like, if I feel hungry at like 8.30 at night, I have pasta. Like, when I was playing, I'm not eating after 6.30. If, if I am, it's like a yogurt in the evening or something like that, because I know that when I come back in, like, it was, you know, it was like day and night, I wake up, go on the scales, right? Thing, yeah. yeah, I was strict. So like, I knew what my playing weight was. I knew what my fat percentage had to be for, to get the best out of myself. Then I stopped. After a year, put on 10 kilos. And that's just from eating the same it's kind of things, normal. but I wasn't burning them calories no more. Yeah, I wasn't burning 3,000, 4,000 yeah, yeah. calories no more. I was, like before intense, I'm running like 10, 10 kilometers in a game, like midfielders in the Premier League will run like 12 kilometers. Like for me, because I wasn't doing that, all of a sudden, you won't notice it on me because I'm tall. But if I was like five foot seven, five foot eight, you'd notice it on me. But Jay, let me ask you this here. Did you think that was actually healthy? Because you know, when you come out of something, yeah. you realize how obsessive you were like with your weight, with all these things, as a woman as well. Like growing up as a woman, being told you're fat when you're about 13, 14, like that's a lot to take, isn't it? Like you're going through puberty and you're having to think like, but I feel like I look back and I'm like, that wasn't normal what I was going through. Like we used to like piss in a, in a bottle and take it to our like every morning Hydration so we can see if we are hydrated or not. Yeah, yeah. Really? I'm not gonna lie, if we forgot, we'd be so scared I'd be borrowing my teammates' beers. <laughs> so I used to do that sometimes. I'm you know, not joking. Like, I used to, like, I used to, I used to, to, I used to piss in it and then pour, pour some water in it. Yeah, because you get in trouble. Imagine. <laughs> you know, this culture of like you'd be scared if you if you if you weren't hydrated enough, it showed you wasn't committed. But actually, it could be many different reasons. But those types of things, weighing every day, 
we ain't in a bottle. It's like it's not healthy. No, I'll be honest with you. I don't but think you know it, it is. It gets to, ain't like that. But it gets to a point now. No, no. But it gets. This to was in England, though, no, back yeah, in the day. Yeah. You just see it as normal. Mm-hmm. Like, That's I, what I'm saying. It ain't normal. Though. No, it's not normal. No. Like even this, yeah. I don't know what you felt like when you retired, but you know, I went to the I went to the GP because I have to, right, to get my epilepsy tablets, a re, uh, repeat re prescription. I went in there and they was like, "Have you got your medical records?" I was like, "No." And I was like, what do you mean you haven't got no medical records? I was like, I, I don't have any. So have you, have you never been sick before? Have you never been ill? And I said, yeah. Have you had a broke any bones? Or like, which I haven't. I've never done my knees or my ankles or nothing like that. And they was like, so how did you get medication? I said, well, I just went to the doctor and said, I need some <laughs> headache tablets. I need some sleeping tablets. I need this. I need that. And it's given to me. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't ask no questions because the most important thing is You're you ready need to, to be play. available Saturday. And you know now we're reading about it in the in the paper, and people are coming out saying I'm addicted to um, sleeping tablets. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to like Zopiclone, and you know well, painkillers. Look at Deli interview Deli the other week. Like all all these kind of things that the most important football is like its own law, right? You just have to be able to perform on a Saturday. You could go out. This is the thing. It's funny. Like you could go out, drink and drive, and smash into a lamppost. Normal person, you're getting sacked from your job. Footballers, uh, you know. Put, a, put like a, a, a press release out there, I'm sorry, you know, I'm going to go to rehab, but you're still playing on Saturday. Yeah. You still wear the captain's armband. Mm. Like, and I think that it just separates footballers, a kind of like, I don't want to say a higher power, but you're, you're in your own little world. And it's a bit it's like that in America with the NFL, though. Yeah, that NFL, stuff, it's like, NBA, yeah. same kind of thing. What is it like, US, to your time, in, your time over there compared to your time in the UK? Did you find it? Did you enjoy life more in the US? Loved it. Did you? And now I'm working back over there like yeah. three times a month. So I'm, I'd really? still be there now. Yeah. If I hadn't met my girlfriend like three years ago, got my green card. Um, life is just better there. I know you see a lot of negative stuff on the news. Obviously, there's still things that need to be better. Um, but I think the quality of life is just different. And I also felt like my teammates embraced me more. In England, when I played, not every team. When I was at Arsenal, we had the most amazing girls, team, everything. Other teams, and even with England, I always felt like it was what am I, what you're getting, I'm not getting, how much you're getting paid, you're getting paid more than me. It was always a topic of conversation. Whereas in America... Same as men's. Yeah. yeah. But then again, we're talking like, you know, 40 grand a week. We're talking peanuts. Do you know what I mean? One peanut or two peanuts. <laughs> like, we're not talking 40 grand. You're getting 40. You're getting, you're getting 60. You're like, you're getting two peanuts. I'm getting three. <laughs> like, and it was just this backstabbing situation. Whereas when I was in America, I never forget your teammates would be like, I'm so effing glad you're on my team, Leanne. That and I'm really like, do you know what? I don't need to be gassed up, but they, they just Embrace they you, know how bring to... Bring you in, get Yeah, you even if you're competing for a place with someone. Like, there's competition, but I believe that's why they're the best at everything. Look at the Olympics. They always top the medal table, not just in football. I feel like I it's think in... that's through collegiate system as well. Yeah. It's installed at a young age, isn't it? To, you got your team and you're playing against this team and you're competitive at a young age, and it seems like it's still like that in football as it well. It is, and anything you, they believe... Anything you put your mind to, you can achieve. Some of the some of them are crazy dreams. I'm not gonna lie, but they they also believe it, and they'll have someone on board that will believe in what you're trying to do. It was the first time I ever become a captain in America. Really? First time I ever played number ten because that's my position. Here they and I love Emil, but I'm like I'm not Emil Heskey. Emil's a good friend of mine, but I'm not a nine that's gonna get the ball. And Emil, I didn't think I really like appreciated me. I him as that. much I'm two since he retired. I'm, I'm a, like people used to put me in a number nine. I, I'm not I a like number nine. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like flicking it. the ball and heading. I'm nah. terrible at heading, but yeah. they'd be like, "You could go on the wall. You know, you can <laughs> hold it up." I'm like, I'm good at my my best thing is my vision. That was always my thing. It wasn't until I moved to America that they were like, "You're gonna be captain," blah blah blah. And to be fair, when I was made captain, when I played on the team, no, it wasn't rocket science. They just left me alone. Told me my role and responsibility. Didn't like gas me up, and I was in like the team of the year. That's I've got amazing. loads of stuff. Like, so would you say it's better? Would you say the 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 football in America for a woman is better there than it is here still? Do you know what? Yeah, if I could merge the two leagues, it would be bliss because I do the games over there. I work for CBS and Paramount Plus now, and there's like you know twenty five thousand at this, and you know the Americans know how to do an yeah, event, the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Every game I go to feels like I'm at the Super Bowl. It's an event. You know, it is, and it's amazing. So I wish we could merge the two. I think when you look at the overall quality of the league here, I always get asked this question. I don't know which league is better, the league there or here, but what I will say is I think the facilities over there are better. Not every team, though, this is the thing, because it's the same as this league. We're talk so we're talking about like the teams, like the LA teams, New York yeah, teams. Yeah, LA, um, Portland, you Portland, know, the West yeah. Coast teams. Like, 
and now, you know, you, you were saying earlier, something I want to bring back, because you mentioned about coaches and stuff. And like in the last two years, there's been about five coaches that have been sacked because, you know, for like, you know, sexual exploitation, all that type of stuff. Because now they brought in a law that you can't do that nonsense. So, you know, you were asking me earlier about teammates. The problems were the coaches. Not necessarily teammates. Yeah, because we've had that. I've seen you've seen that in everything like that. Like gymnastics as well. You see that yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's crazy. It was man. it was it was bad. And one of them was my best friend, but now she's playing in the World Cup for Ireland, and she retired because of all what she went through. And uh, thankfully now they were on Good Morning America. Did you like, speak to that? Did you speak to each other about them kind of things when they happened? Oh, or? do you know what, Jay? Yeah, it's so interesting because we become desensitized to it being like if a coach was if a coach was buying players shots of tequila, that almost become the norm. Like on a night out, and then when you look back on it, you used to think that's not normal. Do you know what I mean? And then that coach, particularly, he was one of the main ones that got they got rid of him. Oh, yeah, well, you never coach again, and he lost his license, everything. But like, you know, you see things happening, and then you're thinking that player's only playing because of that reason. Everybody knows it, but you felt like you couldn't do anything. And this is someone like me who has the biggest voice. I felt like I couldn't really, I didn't have proof. Was there any? Was there any players that had any relationships with managers? Um, yeah. Yeah, there are, and there has been. Um, you can't say that. But not not particularly, no, I'm trying to think. It's more to do with like, because it happened years ago and they might still be together now. Do you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm not, it's not that I can't say because if they're together, then they're together. But there's none that I actively know about now that is a secret. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, because you can't do that. What about male that. and female? What do you mean? Male and female on female and female or? Yeah. Whatever, yeah. it's happened. It's happened over the years, but now they put laws in place that you can't do that. And that's why five or whatever coaches, this is in America, have been, you can look it up, like in the last year, there was a massive law that came in, there was a massive um, inquiry into it. Because at the end of the day, it's like any workplace, yeah? You're gonna meet someone, you have a connection, but I find it so coercive and it's so manipulative that the coaches will use the players and they'll target certain players, it's the same as grooming. They'll target certain players that they know don't have a good relationship with their dad or something like that. It's bad, but luckily now, should have to put a law in place like that. But it, Sinead, who's one of my best friends, who's one of the people, but Alex Morgan, she went up in my estimation even more because she was one of the people that used her platform to bring attention to it. And that's exactly what you need. So now those players that went through that have come out of retirement. And she's actually really good on TV as well, actually, Alex she Morgan, is. I like her. She's very she's knowledgeable. She's got massive pressure, yeah. you know. Like, she's been chosen from years ago to be the golden girl, but being that person is not always an easy thing to do. But, you know, as time goes on, I, I don't miss playing, but I do wish that there was things in place that they have now that they didn't have when I was playing. But that's like we said, we, we always spoke about this, even with me, like, I, I wish there was things in place now that have gave me a better support system. Because um, I had a lot of anger issues. Um, I didn't know how to control myself mentally. Uh, I guess I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder. Um, but I think now in the men's game as well, like you, you got more of you know a support system around you where they might say you know go for therapy, speak to this person, try this. You know we're gonna. I don't want you to play this week. I want to hold you back because I can see you're going through something in your life that could be, you know, we didn't have that then. And I think the fact that they've got that now in every kind of industry, sport, whatever you were in, I think is is really good. And I I always. I always say to myself, if I was playing now, you know, what would my career, career be like now? Like, I can't help but feel like, you know, I see, to be honest, I see a lot of players that I just think... What, if you didn't told your younger self something? Yeah, if I had a... Yeah, yeah if I... If, Do you ever think that if you could go, go back, back and tell and your younger things? self something? For me, it would be like... It's only four years ago, right? Yeah. So it's not too... No, but younger yeah, self. You, but if you go back... Yeah, but I... Younger self, I would definitely say, for me, definitely say, you know, uh, think about what you're going to do before you do it. You know what, it's so similar because I've always, and I tell people this, don't act upon emotion. So there might be an emotional feeling that you have, yeah? And I've reacted on emotions sometimes. And I'm not an aggressive person, anyone that knows me, but it's the feeling of tears and you're, you're feeling in that frame. Sleep on it. And if you still feel the same the next day, go ahead and do it. Whether that means you don't want to be on a team, whether that means, you know, X, Y, and Z. But I've learned as I've got older, don't just say what you feel in that moment because you might not feel it tomorrow just because you're feeling that hurt. You know what I mean? But I, when I look back, though, I don't, I don't, people say, oh, you must feel really bitter that the lionesses are doing well. I'm like, no, no yeah. I don't. I'm, I'm having a Why great life. Yeah. I'm having a great life. I'm enjoying my life and I'm happy the girls but are you, winning. But, you, but the thing is, this is the thing that people always say to me, like, I hate what, do you know what I think? It don't bother me. But I actually, I think what an idiot 
like when they say, oh, but you did this, you did that, you was rubbish here, you was rubbish there. But in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? I played football for 23 years. How many people can say that? How many people can say they played for their country? How many people can say that they've earned enough money and they was lucky enough to invest it that now I've got the second best job in the world, which is talking about football, mm. you know, and talking and about golf. golf, playing golf, <laughs> Play, yeah, playing golf. You know, it's, I mean, I love golf, you know. Liam, we have to get you into it, you know. I thought we can get you into it. I'm not not into it. I just don't like doing things no, I'm not good at. No, we're going to get you into it. Do you know what I mean, though? Like, I don't... You know them courses in America, Liam? I know, I know, but no, in Florida, yeah, the alligators, man, I ain't going nowhere near that. You need to get yeah, for real. But I'm not, it's not that problem. I'm not good yeah. at it, or I, actually, I'm okay, but it's not that I, I don't like doing things I'm not good at. I know my limits. I love a karaoke, but I'm not a good singer. We're gonna singer. get you good. But hold up. We're gonna get oh, you. I good. love karaoke, but I'm not good either. What's your go-to song? Oh, Rocket Man. Elton John. I know. Random, <laughs> innit? I knew that off the top of my one? head. Uh, yours. Ice Cube. Oh, today was a good day. Oh, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> I got I got Nickelback in my in my locker next, didn't it? <laughs> Mine's uh, got to be Biggie Small Juicy. I think you got that. Yeah. I love yeah, a karaoke. I got that. Yeah, I love it. Do you know in Japan when I went to Japan that like, karaoke is massive? There, it is. Right? Yeah. Massive. Yeah. yeah. You go for a meal, then you can go karaoke, mm -hmm. then you go to the club. Is it a big vibe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They love it. Yeah, it's proper. They were the original ones that had their own. They, we brought their idea here as always, but like how you can go into the areas and have the room like this. Yeah, like this. Yeah, that's what it was so like you'll be you'll be in a, like a place like this literally and then you have all your friends in here with a karaoke yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it's different rooms yeah yeah it's really good man here's I, a I question i got um leanne how come obviously you don't play golf and have you played golf before yeah okay when was that my dad so my dad plays nearly every day in the summer yeah. and he actually wanted me to be a golfer remember i said at the beginning yeah, yeah, you'd say but that, actually. i just never felt a lot of footballers say it relaxes them it doesn't relax me i oh, go no. to a spa or a steam room for that do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, just work yeah. off. Yeah. I go on my own. I do. I go on my own. That's what I do so now. So your idea of a holiday is Maldives on a... On a on just a, just a, relax. relax. You know with our job, Jay, it's like you've yeah. got to take that it's time. Intense, yeah, but yeah. my dad loves golf. He's He will tell you he's not good, but he is. I'd, I'd say my dad probably plays off about 12. Yeah, that's Something steady. like that. That's good. He'll tell you opposite. He'll be telling like 18 or something. But he's not like <laughs> a hustler a trying yeah, to be hustler, like, like no, no, no. But he is good. Me and need to get a game then. Yeah, you do. I'd like to. He'd love to. He is good, but... You know, the last time I hit a golf ball, or tried to, was at Soccer Aid, and it's in front of all the boys and that, and they're like, oh, do you want to come round and do the longest drive and all that, right? It's for charity at Mottram Hall. Literally, there's probably still a chunk out of the ground. Now, <laughs> like, like I, I used a driver, <laughs> but I can actually drive a ball, yeah, because my dad always used to say to me, like, don't try and hit the ball too hard, right? Because I think, because we play football, we think we've got to just lash it, hard, it right? Yeah, yeah. So I tried to listen to what my dad says, you know, the grip and all yeah. that, and the stance. But then, like, I was—I think I just was nervous because when Harry Redknapp and all the boys are watching, they're encouraging me. They're going, "Go on, Leanne, you can do it." And then I was just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I was well embarrassed, and I didn't do hit the ball. Do you know what? Do you know the best thing? Who, who's the guy? Um, Bill Murray. Bill Murray is it? Huh? The, the comedian actor. Bill, or the actor? Bill Murray. Is it Bill Murray? When he plays in some of the programs, he comes on and he's like, "Listen, guys." I'm probably going to fucking hit this straight yeah, out of the golf course. Yeah, <laughs> but give me a cheer. Come on. Like so that. he's not like yeah, Gareth yeah. Bale yeah. or Steph Curry. Exactly. Steph so Curry. straight away, he sets you up to like, he's saying to you, I'm not going to hit this. So when you do like do a bad shot, there's no I'm expectation. not, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to be that person that is like, oh, I'm not good at something and I'm going to be good. Like at the end of the day, what, if we swing today, what will be, will be. But, no but, pressure. But, on, we're going to get to the challenge in a minute, but on back to golf, do you think golf is a sport that, you would find generally boring or you wouldn't take it up because of stereotypes attached to it. I like going to the driving range. I used yeah. to go to the driving range with my dad because it was more interactive. I don't find it boring because I feel like that would be disrespectful to the golfers. It's a bit like darts, isn't it? Like, that's a skill. Like, golfing is a skill. Like, when they get, like, whole, when they drive the ball, I literally watch it with my dad, right, like the open. I'm like, dad, how do they even do that? Like, I think they did a study a few years ago that the hardest thing to do in world sport was hit a baseball in a real, like, you know, major league baseball game. But there's these technical things that you have to do and having an individual sport like golf, imagine in your own head, but the consistency, these players. That's him, it. that's yeah, him. Like, even when I play it. with him, like, obviously he's not like a tour, tour player. He's a, he's a very good pro player. And like, even today, like yesterday we was playing and it's like, you know, when the ball's below your feet, you know, the, the wet. Knowing the little yeah, things. Yeah, knowing it? the little details. Yeah. That's, so that's one thing he said to me. He said to me, you're a good golfer, but your course management is shocking. Because I don't understand. You feel like you're rushing. It's not, it's it's not just that I'm like... rushing. I take risks that I should, I, yeah, like he yeah, wouldn't yeah. take, you know? And I do shots and I play things that I think, oh, I'm going to try and do that. Whereas a lot he of people He can see wouldn't. that you yeah. shouldn't. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, but it's like you two in football, you just kind of naturally do it, don't you? And you take in them little intricate things. You're already 
going through them in your head. That's like what I was doing. So like, I know as I'm walking up to that ball, the grass is sitting into me and the ball's below my feet. Do you ever think about that? No. I, I would never think about I that. I like the pitch and putt courses and all that, you know. There used to be one up Whitefoot Lane in South and it was great, but they're all closing down though. Like all the golf courses in South East London, like Beckenham Place Park is now this beautiful park, but like there's nowhere. So how would you find players to play? Do you know what I mean? Like growing up, my dad played, but like I used to go with him to golf days and that type of stuff. And uh, do you know what? You're going to laugh at this, right? I go to like um, Portugal, like Valle de Lobo, all these yeah, golf yeah, courses. courses. I like to go and have a drink on a golf course, but I ain't playing. You should have seen me. I was with my girlfriend. We were the just only the ones boogie. there. We were the only ones there not doing nothing. I was sitting there and these guys were teeing off. I was having a great time. Yeah, just but we were the only walk. ones that weren't playing. I was you know, like... The thing is, golf is a social sport as well, though, which is nice. Like, I, I see yesterday, I don't know if you see, but um, there was a four, uh, four ball behind us playing. Five ball? No, no. Five? One of, no, one of them was disabled. Yeah. He wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. He was just sitting down no, there. No, he did it a shot. I'm telling you. Smart. He did it a did shot, Did he hit a shot? He? Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't see that then. I didn't see that. But I'm saying he was... The fact that he was out there and like his friends just brought him along, it's it was really nice to see. It, it was inspiring. Yeah, like, I was yeah. looking at him, I was thinking, man, like that's so good that your friends are bringing you along. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I thought it was nice, but at the same time, it's social. They're having a laugh. Like we was having a laugh yesterday. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy and Tubes on. Uh, like they were. I Tubes mean, is good, right? Tubes is decent. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he, he loves golf. Yeah, he loves it. I mean, that's his, that he's but golf you know what we were talking about earlier about the when you're teeing off on the first. I went with my dad. Yeah, I was so scared. No, so everyone's watching you. Yeah. There's nothing like and dad it. And that was going. Yeah, yeah, don't you? That was going. Don't worry, darling. Like you're 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 actually probably better than most of these blokes. And I'm going. No, and actually, when I watched, I was like, actually, I am. So that made <laughs> yeah. me feel better. Because I'm thinking, I just personally wouldn't do something if I wasn't good at it. I'm not saying don't do nothing because you're you know not good. Do? do you know what I'm going to say to you? Do you know what I'm going to say to you? Honestly, nah. Leanne, knowing your mentality though, and you want to get better at something, you should try it. I was just going to say, being that. a footballer, yeah. like, you would pick it up so quick. I you think you've got, got good management though of it though, because I went with my dad, yeah. I drove the ball. Like I said, I like to drive it and in short game, I'm get bored. Putting, great. <laughs> but I saw my dad's friend and he was about to hit this shot over the tree and I'm going to my dad, no, he's not going to, surely he's not going to hit that. <laughs> Dad's going, no, he is. And he did. And I knew he shouldn't have done that. Yeah. So I feel like I've got a decent up, brain yeah. for it. things up. But at the same time, I just... Maybe I might... My just, dad will be overjoyed if I was to go and do a round time. with him. Come a little on, bit man, of time. Do... If you've got time... Bring your dad and we'll play together. Yeah. I'll play with your dad. Hey. Yeah, bet, bet you can play with my dad yeah. and I'll carry your clubs. No, yeah. I bet you got one of those ones that you, my dad's mate's got one of those, I know, yeah, the uh, ones that you can do donuts with it in that remote that, control no, one. That, that's a, that was a game changer for me. We're in America though because it's getting yeah, cold no, here now. Yeah, exactly, country. it is going to get cold now. Should we do the challenge? All right, come Let's on Let's do it. Come on, we're going to get you here, Leanne. <laughs> we do a nearest the pin, yeah? But you can, know what, you can. Let me do a practice swing. Let's do the knife. Take, take the wrapper off that. I just like the driver. You're right-handed. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to try with the driver then. But you're saying <laughs> I'm just going to the water, you're saying. I if I do if hit it. If you hit it well, I'll let, I'll tell you what, let's hit the driver, shall we? Okay, hit, yeah, try it. Try let's it. hit the driver. Shall I just go for it? Right, we can tell get there. What, we can yeah, get there with that. We're good with this. We're we good with this. Mm. We can get there. I need, to, I need to do a practice swing. The posture's right. The little bit on the top of the club. Yeah, I need to... Swing tell you through. what, yeah, yes. Oh, it's gone. Mm. You can do it. I'm there telling is, you, yeah, you can yeah. do You've this. You got game. You, I you can, do, you can it. do this. Straight away, I, got, I can no, see. No, but you I know the basics. Straight away, I can see you got hand, good hand-eye coordination. Mm. But straight away, because I don't feel as much pressure when I'm with you lot. I'll tell see, you what, it's hard because so. you've got a driver. It's flat. Well, Should I try you, the you, one? All this. What I would say, no, no. I think, what are you saying, bro? I think if you, if you kept that club, the only reason it's not getting up into the air is because there's not as much speed in there. Because you're doing a really short swing. If you lengthen it out a little bit. With this club? Yeah, it get a bit more speed. And then as you're going back, I'll just be feeling. Yeah, you show you, me. you're swinging to about yeah. here. It's only because yeah. I don't feel like I'm going to be able to hit the ball. Come on, you got, you got so this. So go up you higher. A little bit higher, yeah. Okay. I'll try and get your hands up by your shoulder. All right, I'll go higher. Yeah. Then I'll just feel like I'm not going to hit the ball. And uh, you got it's this. It's hard because you, you feel like you lose the club. Yeah, All stay right, relaxed on that club. Yes. Oh, it's just cutting a little bit. That, weren't, that wasn't a bad That was that good. Was, I tell you what, distance-wise, it got there. Do you know if you what, can though? do that again, if, that, if you do that again and it's straight, just like, on the green. Slow, slower, slow, relaxed and longer. Okay. You got this. Rolling, rolling. See, that's yeah. a back-to-back. -back. That's all right. Back-to-back. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. 
Oh my god, I need you to coach me all the time. I would say, I, <laughs> I told you, we can do it. I'm going to give you one, I'm more, get you into one this, more tip to straighten it out. There it. Is. I'd say one thing, you see this hand? You turn that over a little bit more, that'll straighten the club face up. So, that's um, a bit closer, both hands over. Like that? Yeah, yeah. Does that feel you, a bit uncomfortable? So you see, doesn't feel natural, when you look but down, yeah. you want to be able to see this knuckle here. It's that second knuckle. Okay. So if you rotate your hand over a bit more and then grip it. Oh. Okay, that's it. And then lengthen. That feels weird. Yeah, it's but... going to feel odd. All right, okay, let's have a go see. like that. What? Yes. Oh, oh it's close. <laughs> close. <laughs> Like, <laughs> <laughs> she liking it now. <laughs> Come on, we gotta get one on there, haven't we? So the aim is to get it on the. You want me to get it on the green, though. Yeah, you gotta beat, this don't count. You're gonna beat me if you get it on the oh, green. Oh please. Because I missed the green, didn't no, I? No, do you know what he missed the green? He missed yeah. the green what, three like, times. Like went past it. No, then? he got. He, is it bunkers? The oh, very, right the very first the time we filmed. Oh, well. Remember two knuckles on that left hand. There you go. Yeah. Nice and relaxed grip. Good. No, I'm telling you, dragging, you've, got, you've, got, you've, got, yeah. you've got potential. All right, I'm all the way Come through. On, this is, this all right, is I'll one. go. I'm not going to hold back Come on, on this. Don't like, hold if I miss back. it, I'll, I'll... Don't hold back. Oh, smashed it. Oh, oh. smashed it. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> it landed, but Where is it, it? Was... Is it in the bunker? 13 yards away. That's cool. So that's that? good. That is oh good. That's what I said. That's a good lesson, Trey. My dad is going to be so proud. A little bit of fade as well. My dad's going to be so line. mad. Well, we've got that. I'm going to definitely send that over to you. <laughs> no, but do you know what, right? You're I didn't, another, you're I didn't hold back. Aren't you? No, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> but I'm not saying hold back. But in my mind, yeah, if I yeah, swing yeah, all the way and swing all the way, I'm going to miss the ball. But you've got to trust it. Because you think you're set up in the right way now and you relax. If you don't trust it, you'll get tense and you pull the yeah. club off. But do you know what? You Even I do that. Where am I on the leaderboard? We are going to be. Well, we got well, looked at, you looked, well, we got signing it. Because it's 13 yards in the bunker, so. I think, gonna, I, uh, am I signing I think, it, yeah? Yeah, I think longer is always better and than shorter. And also, you was closer than Harvey, wasn't you? Yeah, that's true, yeah. So you're going to go. So you're like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Ten. Number Number some ten. of these people play as well. I play as well. It's all right, this is a great question, Leanne, that we got, and we ask a lot of guests this. If you could give a young person some advice in their career, whether it be football or a job or work that they're doing, what do you? What would that look like for you? I think my best piece of advice, and I say to my kids that I train in America, always know what you want to do and never let anybody stop you from doing that. And even if people don't believe in your dreams, like they didn't believe in mine when I said I wanted to be a women's... I didn't even say women's professional. I said professional footballer. People used to laugh. Now who's laughing? So, you know, I think you just have to believe in it. Even if you want to be a doctor, nurse, vet, whatever it is, just always know what you want to do and go for it. I uh, love that. No, that's great. Great, great answer. That great is, having you on, Leah. Honestly, Thanks, that was guys. a great show. Loved it, no, no, it's been wicked. The energy was amazing. <laughs> now I'm going to be a pro golfer, innit? Forget the punditry. <laughs>